So this is a really cool little project I had uh, under visualizations on my um, blog site. And it's Minesweeper from way back on the day in Windows. Um, awesome little game. I made a pretty cool little clone of it that you can play. You can actually play it right on the uh, right on my blog, right on my website. Um, and it's got you know it's got how many bombs over here, or how many flags I guess, but that's how many bombs there are. It's got the timer, and you know you can right click to make it a bomb, left click to try to clear the cell. So that's a bomb, and then if, you know if there's two. This tells you how many bombs are in every adjacent or in all the adjacent cells. So if there's two, you know that that one has to be open. And then there's only one surrounding this, and that one's that we think's a bomb. So we can clear those and so on and so on and so on. But it, it's a pretty cool game. Um, from back in the day. See if we can beat this now that we've got this far. Oh, we're getting close. Only one more bomb, and we did it. We won. See, and his face turns to really happy when you win. And of course, I put in the different levels of difficulty, and it'll just automatically change. So, this I built on this observable platform, which is a platform built by the same guy that built D3 or data-driven designs, Mike Boschwick or something like that. Um, really smart guy, um, really cool um, really cool framework, D3, all kinds of really cool visualizations, charts, graphs, games. You can make so much with it. And um, I actually embed it. It's like this is an embedded version of what's living on that observable platform, which is observablehq.com. And you can do all kinds of cool notebooks, they're called. And you can work with JavaScript and D3 and all kinds of cool stuff, maps and charts and you name it, right in the browser. Um, so this is where I built all the source code. And then I embedded this into my blog, which is a really cool feature. Um, so this was pretty complex to build. Um, this is all SVG for the most part. I did use, um, this is like little bitty photos all pieced together to make the border. Just to give you an idea, create frame. This is the whole, look at all these little pieces, border, top right, top left, joints, left, right side. It's crazy. All little GIF photos. And then I basically use maps, I use the ray maps to map them all together in the right order, which is pretty crazy. Um, but it turned out to be cool. I couldn't figure out a way to get a cool looking border around it um, until I figured that out. And then I'm using, you know, um, all kinds of cool stuff, event listeners and rectangles. Let's see, I got rectangles here. I've got glowing text. You might have noticed the glowing text in these things. I've got the timer going. Um, I'm randomly creating the board and I'm storing all kinds of data. Every time a new board is made, you know, it's, 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 it's finding out where all the bombs are um, and it's calculating all those numbers that you see. You know, it's, it has to calculate the ones, the twos, and put a color to them. So that's, that's a pretty cool kind of recursive function. Um, well, here's the function that, let's just take a look at it one at a time. Here's the function that creates the data. So based on however, what level difficulty you're on, um, it's going to know how many bombs 
you know, there's a preset amount of bombs per level of difficulty. So it's going to randomly generate bombs and then make a big multi-dimensional array um, of each cell, you know, which index is it at, which X and Y coordinate, if it's a bomb or not, and has it been checked, meaning has it been has it been scanned to count its neighbors? And then this crazy find neighbors function is really long, really complex. But I figured out, you know, how to count each each uh, cell's neighbors. And you know, you get that number. The most you can have is eight bombs, all surrounded by bombs, and the least is no bombs. So you get all that cell information from the create cell function, a bomb count, and an array of neighbors. And that's how it basically knows what to do. Um, of course, the right click is a context menu click. And it's got to update the cells on every move. Yeah, it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool, um, it's a pretty cool game. And you can definitely check out the source code here at the link, which I'm probably, oh yeah, here's the source code link right in my, um, right on my blog. So if you're interested in really digging into that code, it's too hard to explain in a short video. I gave you the, the overview of it. But uh, your your program has to generate all the data, randomly assign bombs, count all the neighbors, uh, reevaluate which cells are visible, uh, which you know which squares are visible, which ones are still covered up every single time while running a timer, counting bombs. It's pretty cool, and that restarts the game right there. So it's a pretty sweet little project. It's definitely. Doesn't look like it's much, but there's a lot of code that goes into that. So come to my site and play it.